Okay, this is part three of a session report on the Battle of Quatre Bras. Uh, this continues at the 1600 turn. And during this turn, Foy's uh, division clears out the last of the Nassauers on the western flank. The Nassauers rout, and, and that is effectively the end of the, the Dutch Belgian infantry division. Uh, Foy then moves his men up to the Nivelle Namur road and prepares his men to assault the Hanoverians guarding the road. Over on the eastern flank, Jerome Bonaparte's 6th Division attempts to assault the exposed and tired Dutch-Belgian light cavalry, but the French attacks go terribly and they all end up disordered, and thus the cavalry breathe a sigh of relief. At the 1620 turn in the west, Foy attempts to send his men around the flank of the Hanoverian defences, and they pin and assault the westmost regiment, the Hillesheim Landwehr, and then begin to move around to the left. Now, the Hanoverians respond by pulling back north away from the Nivelle Namur road and reforming their line. But with Allied reinforcements arriving on this road out in the west, this leaves Foy in a, a rather difficult position. In the centre, uh, Brunswicker reinforcements have arrived, and they turn left or east at the, the crossroads, and they begin to march towards the far left of the Allied line to face the French right flank. Now, further to the southeast, the French pull back to restore some order and reorganise their units, while other elements of Jerome's uh, 6th Division attempt to clear out some of the more forward elements of the Allied defences in the centre. In the 1640 turn, uh, Allied reinforcements are rushing towards the field from the north and the west. The French occupy small parts of the, the Nivelle Namur road, but only on the extreme edges of the Allied positions. In the east, the Brunswickers shift into line formation and take up a position along the eastern flank of the Allied line. Uh, the Dutch-Belgian cavalry then move in behind and to the left of them to protect uh, their flanks against French cavalry in the area. In the west, Foy is forced to pull back to prevent being wedged in between those, those two Allied divisions. He tries to maintain some pressure uh, on the Hanoverians occupying the road, but his regiments are, are very weak by this stage. Uh, the 1st 93rd Regiment has been wiped out, and most of those remaining units are really down to half their strength or less. In the centre, Jerome 6th Division renews uh, the attack on the Allied centre to clear the way forward. 6th uh, Division men also spread out to the east uh, in preparation for an assault on the Brunswickers. And behind them, Bachelot attempts to organise his disordered and panicky regiments to help uh, renew the, the assault. Now, the French 6th Division assault in the centre goes well, and the British 32nd foot rout. Uh, French cuirassiers also move up into that area. Uh, they have no clear plans yet, but um, they're in a good position here to either punch through the centre or to support the 6th Division assault further over in the east. They just hold for the time being. In the 1700 turn in the west, the Hanoverians strike against Foy's reformed line. And more Allied reinforcements are rushing in from the west, and the pressure on Foy's 9th Division here, already quite high, uh, is going to continue to increase rapidly over the coming hour or so. He tries once again to pull back his line a little to stem uh, the flood of Allied infantry, but it's clear uh, the French left flank here is in, is in big trouble. Further east, the French prepare for a, a renewed series of assaults. Jerome's 6th Division begins by clearing out some Allied artillery and shifting around to the eastern edge of the Brunswickers, while Bachelot's men move up to the centre right of the French lines. Now, a strong French skirmish line is holding the French centre and harassing the, uh, the Brunswickers quite nicely as these manoeuvres further east take place. At the 1720 turn, the... Uh, British Guards Division arrives and they rush south in an attempt to outflank Foy's men. At the same time, the Hanoverians cut Foy's 6th Division to shreds. Uh, the 6th Division uh, has now suffered roughly 75% casualties and they're no match for the several thousand Allied troops pouring down them from the north and the northwest. Um, the best they can hope to do is slow down the Allied counterattack and buy some time for uh, the French in the east to do something <laughs> more meaningful and impactful. And so, over in the east, Jerome uh, launches his men at the Brunswickers in a series of assaults, but that, that strong Brunswicker line holds firm against the French, leaving several French regiments in disorder. French light cavalry also pushes back their Dutch-Belgian counterparts in the Far East, 
or Bachelot uh, slowly inches his men up in support of Jerome's 6th Division. Uh, looking over the, the field now, the French are pushing with two relatively strong divisions in the east and have crossed the uh, nivelle namur road. While over in the east, the Allied force under the Prince of Orange is beginning um, their strong counter push back towards the Bois de Bossu. All the smoke in the centre, coupled with the woods and the creek, has made any progress there very difficult for both sides, and it's been pretty static. Uh, at the start of the 1740 turn, the guard artillery unlimbers and fires into Foy's men. Um, the guard's infantry also move up and add to the weight of Foy's concerns. The skirmishers try to hold the guards back, but those 9th Division men are disorganised, they're heavily disordered. Uh, they're on the brink of, of destruction. In the east, the French again launch a wave of assaults against the Allied lines. This time Bachelor's 5th Division men strike against the Brunswickers, while Jerome's uh, 6th Division men shift right in the hope of advancing to the open ground east of that Brunswicker line. Uh, French light cavalry also move up into this area to assist in the infantry advance. In the centre, those skirmishes continue to harass, uh, while the French cuirassiers still wait patiently for their opportunity. As a result of Allied fire, the Foy's men uh, are whittled down even further in the west. Several regiments are eliminated, and the Hanoverians can now move through that pocket that they've created. Uh, the news is no better for the French in the east, where once again the French assaults go very poorly. Uh, several of Bachelot's regiments actually rout while attempting to assault, and this is going to make that 6th Division push in the far east even more difficult. So looking over the field, while four years in, is, is distraught over in the west, the French can, I guess, be thankful at least that the Allies don't have much strength in the east. If anything, they've uh, overcompensated in the west. And at the start of the, the 1600 turn, French uh, light cavalry once again force the, the Dutch-Belgian cavalry back as they move against uh, the, the, the Brunswicker line of infantry. The Brunswickers then decide to form square to head off any potential uh, cavalry charge. Uh, far to the southeast, Erlon finally arrives with large parts of his first corps. Uh, French, uh, more French cavalry is also making its way up the, the road north. Now, this is all encouraging for the French, but by the time those forces really get close to the fighting, it, it may just be uh, maybe too late. Now, in response to those French manoeuvres in the east, the Brunswickers decide to pull uh, their line back a bit, and they hinge their position on those, those plumes of smoke that are clouding the nivelle Namur road. Dutch-Belgian cavalry guard their left flank, and despite giving up more of that east-west road, the Brunswickers feel more secure in this position. And so midway through the 1600 turn, the, the 1800 turn, sorry, the, the fighting around Cutrebach can be divided into two very different spheres, an east and a west, divided by that brussels Charleroi road heading north to south. In the east, the French haven't quite dominated the fighting, but through really weighted numbers and through pushing and careful manoeuvring, they've uh, managed to force the Allies, mainly the Brunswickers, back. While in the west, that early French advance, uh, which saw Foy reach and cross the nivelle Namur road, was first checked by the Prince of Orange's corps before a strong counterattack by the corps saw uh, the effective destruction of Foy's division, which will really continue into the coming hours. <laughs>